so with me is uh, Arlinda Abazi. She is uh, a new member of HumanWare's team. She works for our marketing department. And, Hello, everyone. And she is here. What she's going to do is really help me out with the the, the questions uh, that you, you put forth. And I'm also asking Arlinda if you wouldn't mind hitting that record button to make sure that we're, we're covered there. Um, and uh, what we're going to be doing today is talking about the upcoming Victor Reader Trek. Um, because of all of your excitement and, and our excitement of this product, I'm happy to say that the, uh, the Trek is responsible for probably the largest webinar we've had in humanware history. Um, so for those of you uh, who aren't familiar with the, the Trek, um, we announced it at the National uh, Federation of the Blind and the American Council of the Blind uh, conferences, and the the response was exceptional. Um, we were blown away by just how excited and and how um, how well it was was received. The um, the, the Victor Reader Trek is a combination of two of our most popular products. Um, it is a combination of the Victor like Reader Stream and the Trekker Breeze, but you'll see in this presentation that it's a whole lot more than that. Um, I do apologize for some reason, for those of you who are sighted, the screen keeps cutting in and out on my, uh, on my end, um, but uh, I wanted to make sure that, uh, Arlinda, you're able to be seeing that as well, yes? I do, and I can hear actually your screen reader quite loud when it does speak. Oh, it is. I don't know if there's something you can do about that. I will double check because that shouldn't be happening. So we'll uh, stop the share and we will restart that share. There we go. You all don't need to hear my screen reader there. I don't want to hear my own screen reader. So <laughs> there you go. So we will start and just double checking that. Arlinda, you are able to see the PowerPoint now? Yes, I am. OK. So I'm going to move to the agenda slide. All We are using a platform called Zoom. Um, Zoom is a platform that uh, is super accessible to, uh, to blind users. Um, it is a platform that you can operate pretty much with, uh, with a screen re reader entirely with a keyboard. And uh, to to basically access the control panel, um, you are able to basically press Control, Shift, and Alt together, and you will access the control panel. From there, you can use your tab key to navigate through um, the, the different controls, the different items. What we're going to be using is because we have such a large audience, um, we have a 500 seat license for the uh, for the Zoom platform, and I'm super excited to say that we maxed out that license. So uh, if uh, if you are getting uh, messages that you're not able to attend, we do apologize. Um, we uh, honestly, when we signed up for the uh, 500 seat license, we weren't sure if we were ever going to hit that. So this was a very uh, a very positive response um, for for such a web event. Um, in this case, if you are not able to attend today, I, uh, I'm, and I, I don't know why I'm talking to somebody who's not here, but <laughs> I'm happy to let you all know that this will be recorded um, and we will be uh, distributing it afterwards to those who attended um, so you can watch it in real time as well or in, in, uh, in uh, archived version as well. So without further ado, let's move on to the presentation. Um, if you want to ask questions, uh, Arlinda will be helping me out with that. Uh, use the Q&A uh, button that's in that control panel. So once again, press Alt, Control, Shift, tab over to the Q&A button or to ask a question and type your question at that point. And she will be uh, periodically stopping the presentation uh, it, it just interrupting me and ad, letting me know there's uh, some questions that are available. So uh, once again, thank you all for attending and uh, let's get going. So moving on to the agenda here. So today we're going to be talking about, um, as I said, the, the, the Trek in all of its entirety. Um, we'll talk about what the Trek is. We'll talk about the hardware. We'll talk about the um, the orientation functionality of it. 
the book reading and media, the best of both worlds, so how it actually combines to make a product like this. And then we'll talk about the future of the Victor Reader Trek and what that is, uh, what that consists of. We'll talk about what comes in that box, and then we'll talk about the pricing and shipping when you can expect to get your Victor Reader Trek. So um, we do have a uh, pretty significant backlog of pre-orders. Um, people have been placing pre-orders since uh, beginning of July. So I do urge you, if you want to get a Victor Eater Trek before uh, the holidays this year, I urge you to pre-order the product um, because it has been extremely popular and supply will be limited uh, when we first start shipping. So please, uh, if you want to get a Trek for the holidays, make sure you pre-order it. So moving on. So what is the Trek? It's an all-in-one device that combines the, the simplicity of the Victor Reader stream platform with the orientation functionality, the really popular orientation functionality of the Trekker Breeze. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, we, we had to discontinue the Breeze uh, last year. Um, our manufacturer, the Breeze, was started to be developed in 2008, and unfortunately, we our manufacturer could not provide parts for the existing platform, and the the response to that was staggering. Um, there was so many people who called us up and saying, I, I, "I wish you would continue selling the Breeze. Why are you not able to sell the Breeze?" And uh, at this point, we we did promise to people that we were not leaving the orientation and mobility space. Um, uh, as a blind person myself, as I said, um, I, I, I use tools like that all the time. And I've always believed that information, access to information around you is a blind person's right. Understanding what's surrounding you in the world and in the environment is, is information that is totally valuable to you. And so um, having a device like uh, a, a Victor Reader Trek gives you that information, where you are, what street you're on, what, what Id items that you're passing, what addresses are you passing, what type of intersection are you approaching. That's all the information that sighted people get instantaneously when they open their eyes outside. We need to get creative to get that information and that some of that creativity is, is received via technology like this. So you are using the familiar Victor Reader interface. The picture on the screen is of uh, a front face uh, that looks just like, or a, a front of a product that looks just like the Victor Reader stream. And that's what I'm excited to say is that this product from a tactile purpose feels like a slightly thicker stream. Um, and we'll get into some, some of the details about what's, what's different there. So we'll talk a little bit about the hardware. So as I said, it's the exact same stream uh, button configuration and that's where it's really exciting because there's no learning curve with that. We have um, you know a hundred thousand potential stream Victor Reader users out there um, through the time that we've started selling Victor Reader products and everybody knows what that interface looks like. So for us um, a, a platform like the the Breeze just naturally fit into this type of, of interface. So you have more tactile recognition on the two, four, six, eight, and five keys. And that's done because with the breeze, the most important button that you're going to use is the five key, which for Victor Reader users is the where am I key. Well, in the breeze interface, it's also the where am I key. So the simplicity of the interface, the crossover functionality, and we'll get into a little bit more of that, makes this product even easier to use. So you don't have to learn multiple interfaces. You just have to learn one, and it works seamlessly between the two platforms. So there, uh, some of the differences between the stream and the track. So we now have one microphone slash headphone jack. So those headphone jacks that are you, you can find on uh, on your iPhone or on your Android phone that function as sort of a dual in one. So you can plug in headphones. The benefit there is that we can actually utilize headphones with microphones uh, in them. And that's super helpful when you're outside and you need to record a landmark uh, or a route name or something like that. And you're you got a big semi truck passing you. So, um, so these, the, the headphone slash microphone jack is super helpful. Um, and, uh, you'll be able to, to see some of the benefits there. The, the processor on this device is a Snapdragon processor. Don't ask me which number, but it, <laughs> it is, um, it's a well-known, very fast processor. 
Um, and it's got more power than what the, the stream does. And what, what that allows us to do is some more advanced map processing. Um, we do run a routing engine with the, uh, the GPS so that you're able to get from point A to point B. Um, but most importantly, we're able to process things a lot faster. So what that means is things like, uh, you know, downloads and things like that. You, you're able to access, ac access that a little bit faster with this processor. And Greg, there's a question that says, are, are we using the same microphone that was on the Victor Reader stream? Uh, we are, but some, some people have mentioned that uh, they've had a few um, a, a few questions about some some type of background noises and stuff like that uh, we're, we're ensuring that the quality of the microphone is um, is is at the the the, the quality that uh, that Victor readers users are are used to um, but most importantly we need a microphone that's going to be able to be used uh, outside and so it's uh, it's it's a similar microphone I don't know if it's the same one or not but uh, I know that they they are analyzing any type of feedback issues that we uh, will we, we could possibly encounter. Okay, and we have a, and we have a belt clip on the case. We uh, we do. Yep, correct. There there will and we'll get into what's in the box, but there will be a belt clip on the case. Correct. As I said, the slightly thicker profile to accommodate the uh, the new processor and the GPS antenna, um, and. One of the big benefits of this new antenna, and we'll get into some of the orientation benefits there, is that the GPS receiver is extremely good. Um, you'll be able to acquire GPS connection. Um, if you've turned on the device recently, you can get it within 20 seconds. And if it's from a cold boot, let's say you haven't used it in a couple weeks or three weeks, it can it, you, you can get GPS connection between 10 seconds and like 50 seconds. So. Um, Obviously, the more you use it, the better the memory is of where those satellites were um, in, in memory. But in most cases, in, in our, our initial tests, you can average 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds to get a, uh, a GPS connection. So um, that is really helpful. That was one of the, uh, the original problems, actually, with the Breeze, was that at times it could take a pretty lengthy amount of time to acquire a GPS fix. Uh, you're still going to be able to get that uh, 12 to 15 hour battery life. Our tests indicate that um, in most cases you're going to get 9 to 10 hours of usage, sometimes 11, uh, with the GPS receiver activated. And if you are just listening to books uh, inside and you're not using the GPS chip, you can actually turn that GPS chip off and get your 15 to 17 hours of battery life uh, just reading books. There is a Bluetooth chip on the device, and that's something that Victor Reader users have been asking for for a long time. So you can connect with your uh, your Bluetooth speakers. Your uh, a lot of people ask me, can I pair it with my Amazon Echo? The answer is yes. Um, Bluetooth headsets, things like that, and there there is a vibration motor um, along with a an FM radio chip inside of it. So I'm going to move on past the hardware. So the the, a lot of people have asked who have been Breeze users, you know, are you cutting out any functionality of the Breeze? And the answer is no. Um, this is a straight up port of the Breeze software. So you're not losing any functionality and you're actually gaining uh, quite a bit as well. So we took a lot of the feedback that we got from Breeze users. Um, I can remember one specific person who asked uh, in the landmark list and landmarks are basically virtual breadcrumbs that you create um, to allow you to get back to certain locations if you uh, if you want to. Um, one, one person asked me in the, in the landmark list, can you make sure you add the city and the state or the province or the location where that landmark was originally recorded because I may have three landmarks called house. Well, that's one thing that we were able to do with this. So um, we did take some of the feedback that we got from Breeze users and uh, incorporated that into the um, user interface of this, uh, this, this new Trek product. The most important button that you're going to encounter is the where am I button. That's on the Breeze. There's a picture of the Breeze on the right side. Um, there's a big orange button called the where am I button. On the Trek, the where am I button is the number five key. And when you put the Breeze in your hand, you'll notice that your thumb naturally falls on that where am I button on the number five key. And we have two large dots to allow you to understand where that is when you're outside navigating. Um, so your, your thumb will just sort of naturally fall onto that button. 
The two, four, six, and eight keys, as I said, have tactile outlines so that your fingers can find them immediately when you're walking. I live in Wisconsin here in the, U in the U.S., so we do have some cold winters. Our Linda's up in Montreal, so she knows all about that. And uh, when, you, when your, uh, your fingers are a little chilled, uh, sometimes your tactile sensors don't work as well. So we wanted to make sure there was some pretty strong tactile identifiers on the two, four, six, eight, and five keys to uh, help you identify them right away. Of course, you can drop your voice tag landmarks anywhere, and that includes on streets or in open area. And that's one of the biggest selling points and the re biggest reason why I, I'd say the, the breeze is, is so different from other things is that when you're in open area, you can still landmark locations. I remember I was taking my daughter um, to the park, uh, and I hadn't been to this park before. And so I was walking around getting an idea where the, the the swings were and i had my my trek in my hand and once i found the swings i landmarked the swings and from there even though i wasn't on the street i was able to as the crow flies get instructions to how to get back to the, the swings the next time i uh, i got to that park um it's it, as i said you know as, as a blind traveler myself in most cases, I probably would be able to know where it is, but it's always great to have that reassurance, to have that 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 clarification that yes, I am going in the right, that I am going into the uh, into in the right direction. I just saw a question come in that says, "How much internal memory?" The answer is 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Um, your maps will be on that that internal storage as well. So um, a map. And Greg, and Greg, is the battery replaceable? Battery is replaceable. Correct. Mr. Chevalier was asking. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, you also, in addition, I don't think I put it on the hardware slide, you can put uh, your, your traditional stream SD cards in there. Um, some people believe that or, or, or think that a stream SD card actually only is supported up to 32 gigabytes. And that's, that's the high capacity SDHC uh, version of that, but what you some people don't know is you can actually on your computer, you can format that card if you have like 128. I know somebody has a 256 gigabyte card that they're using, and if you format that to, uh, I believe it's FAT file system, um, you can use that on the stream. It's not just uh, it's it's not only limited to uh, to 32 gigabyte cards. If you format that card to the FAT file system, uh, you are able to use that uh, on your on your on your Victor Reader Trek and Victor Reader stream. So um, don't don't just worry or don't just limit yourself to the 32 gigabytes. And our technical support team can help you with that as well. Um, Greg, uh, there's yeah. a question that says, are the maps free? The maps come with the uh, the trek, so um, and we'll get into that a little bit more um, when we talk about kind of the new benefits of the trek. So I'll I'll save that uh, until we get to that slide. Um, so th just to wrap up, you are able to enter an address, and on trek you're able to use the telephone keypad, which is uh, a little bit simpler than what was on the on the breeze. This the or on the breeze there was nine buttons, and you had to press and hold down those keys until you found the right. Um, the right letter you were looking for when you're entering an address. And that could be a little bit lengthy when you had a long street name or something like that. On the track, you're using the t traditional telephone T9 keypad and most people are already familiar with how to use that um, based on you know doing searches for books, doing searches for podcasts and things like that. So the same uh, interface applies uh, when you're when you're actually entering addresses. And of course, look around, look at what's around you. So holding that "Where am I?" button to activate the "What's around?" or "What's around?" feature um, is is super beneficial to understand exactly what's within your your immediate vicinity. And then you can also search. You can break down your searches to restaurants, to uh, to you know hotels, to things like that, and actually get a list of things that you're looking for. So how are things different now on the track? You can tap one additional time on the online button. So on the stream, if you remember, you had the offline bookshelves and the online bookcase. And the online bookcase was where you would access your internet radio, your, uh, for those of you in the US, the NLS Bard or, or Talking Book on the Daisy Online services. Um, uh, I, I've used the uh, NFB Newsline on the, on the, the stream myself. Um, so you, you have access to a lot of online resources. If you tap a third time, an additional time now, 
you're able to access uh, the orientation mode. And I'll, I'll get into a demonstration towards the end of the presentation today. Um, but pressing that is now a three-way toggle rather than a two-way toggle. So um, you are able, and when it, it does distinguish whether you're offline bookshelves, online bookshelves, or the orientation mode. We are using maps from TomTom Tom now, and that's uh, one of the big benefits of what we're doing with the Trek is now, in the past, with Breeze, you had to download individual states or provinces or sections of maps, and we could only keep four of them on the SD card at one time. I'm happy to say that we are now shipping with very large uh, regions. So for example, when you buy it in North America, you get the entire North American map on your device, and that includes US, Canada, and US, uh, US territories. So gone are the days of needing to shuffle in and out of maps if you're doing a road trip, so that's really helpful. Uh, as I said, the stream buttons make it easier to navigate on the go. The five key is your where am I button. That's going to be your the most used button you use on the product. And as I said, your finger is going to naturally fall onto that button. Um, some of the other similarities, though, um, the bookmark key is serving as your landmark key. Um, so booking, bookmarking in the, uh, the stream interface, it was the same basically as dropping a landmark in your traditional environment when you're using orientation mode. Enter an address using the go to button. So you go to a section in a book and you go to an address um, or go to a point of interest or, or a landmark. So you, uh, you use that go to button in the orientation mode to go to different, uh, different locations as well. And Greg, there's a question that says, is there a way to manage maps stored in internal memory? Uh, I've, not, not that I know of because you, well, it, let me say it this way. It, when the product ships, we, we do not have, uh, we won't immediately have the ability to have multiple maps that will be coming as we test more maps. So the product will be shipping in North America uh, initially and we, uh, we're going to be beginning testing uh, very shortly in other other countries as well. The sooner that we can validate the TomTom Tom maps in those regions, the sooner that we can start to add additional maps and to manage them and things like that. When the product comes out, that'll come in a software update. Initially, when the product comes out, um, your your home country will be your map on the device. Um, and then, like I said, with the software update coming very shortly after the launch, um, we will allow you then to, uh, to purchase additional maps for a, a small fee. We do have to obviously pay license and royalties to TomTom, so um, we got we to gotta cover our costs, unfortunately, there. But, uh, but you will be able to purchase if you're going to, say, the UK or to Europe and you're in North America, um, you could download and manage uh, a separate map and add and delete uh, the, those licenses as needed. That's great because there was a question about what the international say if, mm -hmm. if I'm going to Europe. So that kind of answers that, right? Exactly. Yep. Yep. Shortly after the product launches, we will uh, we'll come out with a software update to manage those. But like I said, we are dealing with totally different maps. Um, and some people say, oh, maps are just maps. But what we're doing with the Breeze is very unique. Um, using the vector navigation that uh, that that TomTom Tom offers us to really get clear understandings of not only streets but intersections and that's one thing that the breeze does um, in my opinion the best out of anything else is that you are able to get clear understandings of what intersections look like before you approach them. So for example, a sighted person, when they're walking halfway down a block, they can see that upcoming is a four-way intersection. Um, I don't get that information until I stand in the corner and I listen to traffic coming at me or behind me or left or right. So and does this have the option, because there's a question here uh, that says, is it possible to disable unwanted points of interest while traveling? It's an issue I noticed with the breeze, so if it's fixed on the track, that would be nice. So you, you are able to unset things as destinations, um, and you are able to manage the verbosity of points of interest. So for example, if you, if you don't want to be triggered every time you walk past a Starbucks, uh, you, you, can, uh, you can decrease the verbosity level so that points of interest don't, uh, don't trigger um, while you're walking or unless you ask for them. And does the trek work with a Braille not touch? There's another question. Uh, it does not. I'm not. Uh, we would need to clarify the uh, the use case there. Okay. So uh, as I said, entering an address is easier with the telephone keypad. Um, 
the GPS chip is, as I said, very much improved. Um, and one thing that we did do is we uh, we 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 increased the speaker capacity. So um, with the breeze, some people would say that if we were just using the the stream volume that was there, um, the 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 trek would be a little bit quiet. And that is true. If you're walking outside and you've got a bus passing you and stuff like that, you do need extra volume. And you can use Bluetooth headphones and things like that, or wired headphones if you want. But um, when you enter orientation mode, there are five additional what we call outdoor volumes. And these are volumes that increase the, the volume of the product um, in the orientation mode. Um, and some people will be like, well, that's not the clearest uh, speech I've ever heard. Well, when you're outside and you're just trying to listen to where you are located in space and what intersections are coming, sometimes a little distortion isn't the worst thing in the world. So, um, the, and I'll, uh, I'll do a demonstration of what these outdoor volumes sound like here in a minute. So some people say, well, are we, gain are we losing any Victor Reader functionality? The answer is no. Um, so it is the exact same functionality as Stream with the Victor Reader, with the, uh, the capacity there for, for using all your online bookshelves, your, um, you know, that kind of stuff. You will be able to use that integrated Bluetooth chip to play your books on, uh, on Bluetooth speakers, on Bluetooth headphones. Um, you will actually be able to control your volume, and this applies both in orientation and Victor mode, um, is that some of the, the headphones or the headsets that have the integrated uh, controls, like uh, some with up-down volumes, and then there's usually a third button, um, we've actually mapped. You can raise and lower the volume, and then you can also um, use that third button for different features. So, for example, in Victor mode, that third button, which is often the middle button between the up and down volume, on your headset wire can be used to play stop in uh, in in the victor when you're when you're playing a book and in in orientation mode that's your where am i feature so if you are using headsets and we at humanware always recommend to um, at least if you are using earbuds and things that are actually in your ear um, I, I always walk around, I'll, I'll have one out of there because you need to be able to hear your environment. But, uh, but if you are using a headset, um, that third button uh, will serve as your where am I button when you're walking around. And Greg, there's a question that says, can you get info about businesses while listening to a book on the device? That's, that, that is something that we are, we are looking at. Um, in how we can utilize that information. When the product launches, I don't believe we will have specific information. Um, you you won't be able to to say get the phone number or something like that of a of a of an address or of a a, a business. However, that is something that we're going to be uh, utilizing, and that is one of the benefits of using TomTom. Is we uh, I believe get more access to that type of information. And when uh, the keypad is locked, will the headphone play or pause still work? When the keypad is locked, all funk. Well, I got I, I would actually have to test that. I haven't validated whether that, but uh, I know that your your entire keypad will be locked. Whether that stops all functionality, I'm not sure. Um, my my assumption is yes, because if your keypad is locked, I think all key functions are are paused at that time. I did see the question of whether Audible is going to be supported. I think it's a great question. Um, I'm happy to say that. We are in discussions with Audible. Um, Audible has changed their their policy um, on on new device access to their library. They've gone strictly Amazon branded uh, devices, and I'm happy to say that they they are looking to make an exception for the Victor Reader Trek. We are finalizing some contract work, but uh, please, um, if if you know if. I can tell you that a lot of the reason why they've reconsidered is because we've had a number of customers contact them saying that they, uh, they want to make sure that the audible support is on the Victor Reader Trek. So, um, so we appreciate the support. Um, Humanware, obviously, we've, we've, we want to do everything we can to make sure that audible remains on our products. Um, but, uh, if, if, you know, we, we appreciate our customers uh, coming to bat for us as well and saying how valuable that is for you, um, because obviously uh, these these type of features are not important unless you find them to be important. So um, as far as, as things are going right now, uh, you can expect audible support on the Victor Reader Trek. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll ask again for your help if something else happens. So... <laughs> um, 
as for the dimensions, the exact dimensions I, of the trek, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I can tell you that it's the exact same, uh, if I was looking at the face length and width of the, the trek, it's a few millimeters thicker than what the, uh, the, than the stream. So that's about all I can tell you. Um, weight wise, it's actually about the same. I'm holding it in my hand and it feels just about the same as the stream. And is there a feature to copy books between the computer and stream via Wi-Fi? between the computer and the stream there is not okay so i want to talk a little bit about kind of what spawned this idea so i remember very clearly at uh, one of the summer conventions somebody said to me um look i travel on the bus to work and i i would love for my stream to be able to get me to the bus stop i let's say i create a landmark to my bus stop i'm able to get from my home to my bus stop using orientation. Once I get on my bus, I know that I've got quite a lengthy commute, so I want to listen to my podcast. And at that stage, oftentimes, and I'm sure many blind people who are on this presentation can relate, you, you get construction that happens once in a while. And construction happens, and then all of a sudden the bus is detour, and you say, wait a minute, I turn there, and I'm not supposed to turn there. So it would be, they, they mentioned me, they mentioned to me that it would be awesome to have my stream tell me exactly where I am. So I kind of provide some reinsurance that I'm going the, on the right track and things like that. So to switch off of your podcast, to switch into orientation mode, to hear that you're on the street you're looking for. And then you say, okay, I'm good to go. I'll, I'll go back to my podcast. Once you get to your stop that you need to go to work from, um, you switch back into orientation mode and you set the destination to the landmark that is at your building that you need to go to. So that's the, the typical use case that, that somebody mentioned to me and um, I can totally see that as something that, that many people will use. Um, and because, Greg, when you're in orientation mode, there's a question that says, can I record my route for later re reviewing? You can, absolutely, yep. You can record the step-by-step that you take. Uh, so even even as far as you walk out your front door, you walk to the mailbox and, and walk back, it'll record every single step that you take. So I'm gonna move on to the, the bright future slide. So I'm seeing a few, few questions regarding um, replacement of streams or Trek, and the answer is that the Trek is not replacing the Victor Reader stream. Um, this, this is a product that, that does combine the two. However, um, the stream is probably our most popular product, and there's, there's still a huge demand for that product, so this is definitely not replacing it. This is sort of the stream's bigger brother, I would say. Um, it's, it's got a little bit more functionality this stream than the stream, um, but uh, it, it may not be for everybody, and so we're, we're offering both products side by side. Um, many of you are here because you probably use the stream in, in one capacity or another. Um, so talking about the bright future, um, so the device does support the Bluetooth iBeacon technology. When the product comes out, we won't have any indoor navigation support yet, but we are working with some partners to, um, to bring some of that uh, to you in a later software update. Um, that is our goal, is that we believe the Trekker is the best device out there to, to do orientation, and we want to bring that orientation inside. And right now, there's not really a true consensus of indoor navigation technology, but the leader that is the most popular is the iBeacons. And so um, that's what we're supporting right now for indoor navigation, and we are, we're looking for partners to, to help us with that. So um, we have that functionality. Now we need to make sure we find the most popular beacons that are available so that when you go in buildings, they actually contain beacons. Uh, the GPS chip supports GPS, GLONASS, and there is an upcoming system called Galileo. The chip is Galileo ready. Um, from what we hear, Galileo will be completely opened up probably the end of 2018 to 2019. Um, when that's ready, there will be a software update uh, available uh, sh hopefully shortly after that that comes online or fully online. And, uh, and what Galileo does, or the potential of it, is to basically take that, I believe it's 10 meter, um, minimum that, that we can get. So basically there's a restriction put on civilians uh, that you can get up to 10, I think it's 10 meters of accuracy. Um, so it's not good enough to get you to the doorknob, 
but it's good enough to get you within the vicinity. Well, Galileo has the potential to get you within one foot of, of your destination. And so that's uh, really exciting for us as, as blind people. And, um, and so we, we wanted to make sure we will support it. So GLONASS is a, um, a, a, a GPS constellation or, or um, system that's there uh, outside of the US, so outside of North America. And so we I just want to make sure that, that it is known that we do support GLONASS as well. And Greg, before the update that allows the device to navigate indoors, will it be possible to drop landmarks indoors? No. Uh, you, you need those beacons to be able to give you some point of reference indoors. Otherwise, you're kind of, <laughs> for lack of a better term, you're flying blind at that point. So. Does um, reader track support other languages or voices? It, it will. Um, so the, the beautiful thing is that we already have uh, quite a bit of the localization done because the stream is in, I want to say, 20 something languages and the breeze was in quite a few languages as well. So we, we do have several of the, 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 the strings and phrases already translated into multiple languages. Um, and that's going to kind of coincide with the testing of the maps. So um, that's, uh, that is something that we're really excited to bring. Um, the breeze was kind of limited in, in, uh, in the access to different countries and things like that. So we want to make sure that it's opened up as much as possible. And I did see the question there um, about updating. And uh, you'll hear me demo that shortly. But uh, yes, you will be able to bring both maps and software updates wirelessly to the device. So. I'm really happy to say that we can hopefully say goodbye to the Trekker Map Manager and you can do everything computer free on the device. So what will be in the box? So you'll have the Victor Reader Trek and the country map or the, the region map already pre-installed. The, I just saw your question. Right now, the map has to be on the internal memory. And the reason being is because that internal memory allows us for faster processing than what an SD card would, would allow us to do. So right now, it cannot be moved. Uh, I believe that the North American map is about 6 gigs uh, in size. So you'll have 32 gigs. So you'll have 26 at your disposal, plus whatever you decide to put on, a, uh, on an external uh, SD card, which I said could be up to like I said, I've seen them at 256 gigabytes if, if you really want to do that. So um, you should have plenty of plenty of room at your disposal. Um, you'll have your, your, your device in the box with the country map. You'll have a carrying case with a belt clip. Um, you'll have your, your Trek uh, headset, which does have an inline uh, control. So you can raise and lower the volume and, and play and pause and things like that. There, you'll have, of course, your long micro USB cable that you have with your your uh, with your stream, you'll have your short USB cable to plug into um, NLS cartridges or thumb drives. You'll have you'll have your AC adapter, and then you'll have your getting started uh, key key guide. Is it'll bas basically be a card showing uh, what the keys typically would do. Um, and of course, the the Trek will come with a onboard user guide, just like the stream does, by holding the number one key, um, and that'll be that'll cover both stream and uh, orientation usage. So what is the price? As I said, you are able to pre-order right now. So um, these are in U.S. dollars. So the pre-order price is the, uh, sorry, I've got my screen reader talking to my ear here. <laughs> the include, or the, the pre-order price is $599, $599, and the retail price is $699. So um, it, it, we, we've been running this pre-order uh, price since the beginning of, uh, of July, and I encourage you all to take advantage of it if you haven't already. Um, and as I said, before, or I haven't said, uh, we are hopefully shipping, or not hopefully, we will be shipping in October. So um, I'm actually uh, supposed to receive my, my beta board very shortly, and I'm really looking forward to that because I'm using an alpha board right now, and any of you who have done IT or technology testing, Alpha boards can be a little bit shaky at times. So, um, uh, Greg, a couple of questions: Will the VA be issuing this product for veterans in October? I, uh, I can tell you that we do have a couple of VAs on our beta list, so I'm uh, hoping that they will will choose. 
I, I hope they'll be uh, they'll be choosing to do that. Um, I do urge you all to talk to your if you are part of the VA to please talk to your VA representatives and encourage them uh, because this is really something that can kind of kill two birds with one stone. In in that the VA I know does a lot with Victor Reader streams and they do a lot with breezes and so this is a, a product that uh, kind of covers both both aspects. Um, I did see the question of can you use your stream charger? The answer is yes. Um, you can charge very slowly from USB if you don't have the wall charger, um, but uh, I do encourage you obviously to use a wall charger um, when plugging in, um, but uh, you are able to use your stream charger. So it is shipping in October, as I said, um, and we do have quite a few pre-orders already, so I do encourage you to, uh, to jump on the pre-order list uh, to ensure you get the product by, uh, by the holidays. But right now, what I wanna do is a few demonstrations of uh, for so people can kind of get a sense of what the uh, what the track sounds like, what it what it feels like, that kind of stuff. Um, for those of you who are raising your hands, I uh, unfortunately, due to the sheer volume of the uh, the number of people on here, we are not able to to unlock microphones. So if you do have questions, I urge you to write them in the chat box. Our Linda will feed them to me if I don't hear them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but but raising your hand, unfortunately, does uh, we won't be able to do anything with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through just a couple demonstrations, and uh, we will just get a sense of what it sounds like. So in the track, I have an SD card. Um, I've also got a a uh, my my North American map on here. So I'm going to power it up, and when I power this device up, I feel you you notice that you don't get a beep. And what you do get is a vibration telling me that I just powered, powered on the device. Fear nothing. Okay, and what I just heard was uh, Victor Reader, um, Victor, welcome to Victor Reader, and it jumped right into the online, uh, online bookshelf or bookcase that I've, uh, that I've entered. Connected to and you heard connected to Wi-Fi. So I just connected to my Wi-Fi, and within a second, we should hear. An update is available for your player. Press the online button to toggle to the online bookshelves. Once they're press seven to start the update. Okay, so what it said to me is that I have an update available. Press the online button to go to my online bookshelf and press seven to activate the update. In this case, I'm not gonna do that because I don't want you to hear me downloading the update. But at this stage, this is, I'm, I'm in my typical online bookshelf. So I'm going to press the number one key. Online bookshelves. NLS Bard. Podcasts. NFB Newsline. Internet Radio. References. Just top, Zero. tapping the number Pod one. NLS Bard. Podcasts. One. Podcast feed. One. Blind Bargains Audio. Featuring the BB Cast. And I. Technology news. Interviews. And more. A T guys. And as, as, as many of you heard the Blind Bargains podcast on this product, I figured I'd give them props on this. <laughs> so I did download uh, or subscribe to the Blind Bargains feed on, the, uh, on, on my Victor Trek here. Um, so I would be able to listen to that, uh, that podcast uh, right then and there on this, on this device. So um, at this stage, that's, that looks no different than what you experienced before. If I, if I press the on, online button Zero. again, you heard it said offline bookshelves. And then I can press it again. Orientation. And you hear orientation. And at this stage, I'm running a virtual walk around of when I was in Florida at, uh, in Orlando. And I could hit the number five key. Heading northwest. Near 9688 Universal Boulevard. Next intersection in 715 feet. Three ways. Universal Boulevard crossing Lake K Place on your left. Okay, so what we heard is that we, we're coming up to a three-way intersection and Le Cave Place is on our left. What that what's super beneficial about that is that you are able to um, you're you're able to understand that the the, the intersection is a three-way with with that street going left. So as I'm walking, I'm not gonna be expecting cross traffic on, on the right and things like that. Um, so you're, you're able to get a full understanding of what that intersection is gonna look like, how far it is, things like that. So now it's virtually walking me around. I can press, I can even hold the number five key. What's around? And hear no what's item. around. Outdoor volume. 
one. And now you heard outdoor volume. So I'm turning it up. You'll hear just how loud this gets, and it may get really distorted on the uh, on the recording here. Outdoor volume two. Outdoor volume three. Outdoor volume four. Outdoor volume five. So it's. That's with the device sitting on my desk, so that gives you a sense of how loud it is. So I'm going to turn it back down, so my wife doesn't yell at me and tell me to not wake my child up. So that's good. Um, I'm going to hold the number five key and check the, the what's around me. What's around? No items. Extended search. Okay, so I'm going to do an extended search by hitting the confirm button. On Cave Avenue, select a category. And we'll do an items. all categories, all categories. By pressing the six key. Searching. It's searching. Fifteen items. Millennium management. Stop. Contravis uh, Builders. Expedia Local. Millennium Management. Prosperity Bank. Liberty Design Beauty. Walgreens. There's a Walgreens. Pharmacy. And I can press the confirm Universal key. Boulevard. 482 feet. Press confirm to start instructions. Press on cresting place. And I could press press and hold if I was in vehicle, and I could get walking directions directly to that Walgreens if I needed to. In addition, I could hold the the go to button, and you somebody asked me if uh, you can silence it. You can press the cancel button or the star key to uh, to cancel the speech. Um, if I press and hold the go to button. Route selection. No route. Explore. Select a landmark as your destination. Forty one landmarks. 445 and I can press the six the key just like on the breeze enter an address. and I could enter an address and press confirm select a state. Seven states. Florida, North America. and you see that it says select a state I've have recently searched in seven different states but I can cycle through NV, North America, Pennsylvania North America Wisconsin North America so these are the states that I've actually searched for in the past in that in that case I could type in whatever state I wanted to look at so um, I could also drop a landmark in this location just by either pressing the record button, just like you record a note, or it's the same function as uh, the the landmark button as well. So if I press the record button, record landmark. This is a test of a landmark. Landmark recorded. And you heard the little ding telling me that I had hit that landmark. If I wasn't doing a simulation, you would have heard my voice saying this is a test of the landmark. So that's that's a brief overview of, of what you can do with this device. Um, there's a number of other things that are possible. Um, so some people ask, if I had a breeze, would I be able to take all of those landmarks that I recorded and bring them into the trek? And the answer is yes. And I'll show you quickly how you would do that. So on the breeze, we had that tool called the Trekker Map Manager. Unfortunately, we do have to use that <laughs> to get those maps exported. Um, so the Trekker Map Manager allows you to plug in your breeze uh, with the SD card inserted uh, to a PC running the Trekker Map Manager, and you are able to go into the landmark section. Uh, in the Trekker Map Manager, there's a backup button that allows you to create a backup of all your landmarks, and it creates two files that you would copy onto the SD card, uh, whether that's the SD card that you use in your Breeze or your Stream SD card, doesn't make a difference, but copy those two files. And once you do that, you'll notice that volume, I'm turning the volume back up. Outdoor volume, outdoor volume, volume. 15. So I'm going to now choose, you, you'll be able to hear, if I go to my settings, which on the stream is number 7, so I'm going to press 7. Settings. And the same thing items. in GPS. The same thing in the orientation mode, so 7 is your settings button. And I'm going to press the 6 key until I find landmarks. Landmarks. So this is the settings, and I can choose which landmark I want to, I want to look at. Landmark selection. 42 landmarks. 445 routes you Okay, and you heard... Canada underscore East. So you heard that it was that that was a landmark that I'm looking at. Okay, I wanted to show you that you heard 42 landmarks. Now what I'm going to do is I have a landmark from my breeze on this SD card that I'm going to now import into my track. So I'm going to cancel by pressing the star key. Explore. And I'll go back into the settings. Settings. And now you'll see that we have a new option. I'm going to press the six key. Landmarks. Routes. Import and export. Import and export. So I'm going to activate that. Two items, landmarks. So I can choose to import landmarks routes. or routes. So I'm going to choose landmarks. landmarks. I'm going to press confirm. 
Three items. Export landmarks to SD card. So you have the option to export all of your Trek landmarks to an SD card if you want to share them with somebody or use them in a different capacity. So you can export uh, as what's called a CSV file. Import landmarks. You can import landmarks. Delete all landmarks. Or you can delete all landmarks. And maybe what you heard just now is it, I interrupted it, but it said podcast download has completed. So that's answering another question that you can download podcasts and books and things um, as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection, even in orientation mode. So I'm going to press the four key. Import landmarks. So I'm going to import landmarks from my breeze. So I've saved those landmarks that I got from the Trekker Map Manager. I'm going to press confirm. One landmark was successfully imported. So Export. now it, it imported that one landmark that I had. So now when we go back into the seven key. Settings, 10 items, GPS. I'm going to press the six key to get back to my landmarks list. Landmarks, landmark selection, 43 landmarks. And now you hear 43 landmarks. So you see that it, in, it imported one additional landmark from my, uh, from my breeze. And I know that this is really important for a lot of people. Um, you a lot I, I know on my breeze for example um, this was a different SD card but I had something like 75 or 80 landmarks that I had recorded over time so being able to make sure that you don't lose that time that you invested I mean I know a lot of people including myself put those landmarks at very specific locations so that um, you're able to, to, to access them um, and, and get to that destination that you're looking for. A lot of times, and I know a lot of people use the, the breeze and the trek in campus environments. So it, we heard somebody mention the VA. Well, the VA is a great example of a, a large campus that you can landmark each individual building. But in addition, you can also use it in a college environment, um, a university where you can landmark your different buildings you need to go to. Um, and even though you're maybe not on a street, you're still going to be in open area. You can still get as the crow flies directions to make sure you're going in the right direction. So, um, so that's a brief demonstration of, of what the, the, the Trek will be able to do. Um, as I said, there's a, a lot of... Imp Greg, would you have time to take some questions? I can. I'm going to go through one final thing, which is Great. I'm going to go through the should just to show you where the Bluetooth functions will be. So I'm going to tap the online button a couple times to get back to the online bookshelves. Online bookshelves. Online bookshelves. And I'm going to press seven. An update is available for your player. Do you want to download it now? Press the confirmed canceled menu. Wireless. So now there's the wireless. I'm going to tap seven again. Bluetooth. There's your Bluetooth. Bluetooth so I can connect to a Bluetooth device if I've already connected to it. Disconnect from Bluetooth device. I can force a disconnection. Forget Bluetooth device. I can completely forget one. Wake up sound. On. So wake up sound is uh, something that'll tell you that the device is woken up. It'll say that the audio is routed to this. Bluetooth. And that you can, of course, turn on and off Bluetooth individually. So um, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and GPS can all be turned off and on individually. You don't have to always use airplane mode to shut them off. So that's a brief overview of what the, uh, what the Bluetooth interface will look like. Um, and, uh, and I've used this many times. I have an Amazon tap at home that I've used, uh, used for, for audio quite well with it. So um, let me turn it over to Arlinda. We can answer a few questions uh, before we wrap up for the evening. Okay, so a few functionality questions since we're on the topic, and there's a couple of important ones that I think uh, we should uh, maybe try and uh, answer now. So routes, can they be created in advance somehow? Can somebody send you a route? So the, the answer to that question is th not right now. Um, we, you, you are able to start a, a route and go step by step through it, you are able to set a destination, whether that be a landmark that you've already been to or by entering a, an address that you want to go to. Um, but I can't, for example, be sitting at home and say I'm going to start from 702 University Avenue and go to 550 Main Street and pre-create that route. That's, uh, that's, that's not something that's there right now. Um, but I know that there is a big demand for virtual orientation. And I think that that is something that we are, we are looking at for a future update. Will the landmarks interrupt a book that you are listening to? No. Um, right now, the, when you're listening to a book, you're, you're strictly listening to a book. You're not going to be getting in, uh, any triggers or information. We are going to be 
bringing that in in a future update, but right now we need to do a, a, a really significant investigation on what people want for information. Because I can tell you that as a, as a stream user myself, when I'm listening to a book, I don't want to hear everything that I'm going to get from the orientation mode. It would be brain overload at that point. So we are doing a bit of research into what people want to hear. Um, we're going to be getting that with our beta testers and with, uh, with, with early adopters as well to get some, get some feedback. Um, if some of you have, uh, have pre-ordered, uh, you can probably be on the lookout for a survey from us as well. We are going to be looking for some feedback on how you, you would want to utilize your trek in the future. So as of right now, when you're listening to a book, you are not going to get feedback from the orientation mode. You can tap that online button once and switch over to the orientation mode. And the good news is, is that you won't lose your place in the book. It'll record your, your last location in your book. So when you go back to that book, it's going to start right where you left off. Can you change verbosity so that it does not speak so much when in a familiar area? Correct. Yes, you can. You can choose to have really detailed information about intersections or just hear university crossing Main Street or not show you landmarks or points of interest or tell you everything you're passing. I can tell you that in some places I've been in New York City with, uh, with the breeze a, a while ago and hearing every building that you pass is a little overwhelming at times. So yes, you can change the verbosity. Okay. Uh, is there a way to transfer files from Victor Stream's internal memory to the track? That is something that we're going to be looking and seeing what we can do um, to, to export things to an SD card. Um, as of right now, the answer is no, but uh, some, of, some of this could be changing in, in two months. Okay, and I have a, a two or three other things. I think one, uh, will Humanware continue partnering with Leader Dogs for the Blind? That question was actually asked a couple of times. Absolutely, absolutely. Leader Dog is is one of our strategic partners. Um, we, we've partnered for a long time, um, and I can tell you that Erica at Leader Dog will be getting one of the, the first Trek beta units because we want to make sure that that's integrated in their curriculum. Um, and of course, we are working, uh, we, we, we are looking for partners all over. So if you know of an organization that, uh, that would be interested in this, we are more than happy to partner with, with organizations all over the world. So I do encourage you to get in touch with your local humanware representative or office. If it's not in North America, contact our UK or Australia offices. Um, and, uh, and, and definitely let us know if there's, if there's opportunities out there that you think the Trek would be, be great for. As I said, we are working with VA hospitals and things in the U.S. Um, please get in touch with us and we'd be happy to, to look at any opportunity. Um, somebody says, I noticed there were several different guidance voices. Is there a way to configure this? So right now, the voice that I have, you heard two voices. You heard the, the human speech, which is the welcome to Victor Reader guy. His name is Blair, for any of you who were curious. Um, uh, he's, he's been sort of the voice of Victor for a long time. Um, and we will be uh, asking Blair to record some of the prompts for the orientation. But the, but the voice uh, that you're hearing... Um, in the voice that you're hearing to give you guidance is uh, is the acapella voice, and that I'm using Sharon, uh, but you'll have different options the same way that you have different options on the stream. So you can use uh, you can use Sharon or uh, I don't know. There's a Louise and a bunch of other ones. Uh, does it have the same protective silicone cover? The unit. It doesn't. It's uh, it's a different case. It is using a silicon style cover, um, but it's got a flap that goes over the the keypad um, for when you're out to kind of protect it against weather and things like that. So it's uh, it's a different case. As I said, it has a belt clip on it so that you can clip to your belt um, so that there's easy access to the keypad if you uh, if you have it open. Besides talking book formats, what other file types will the Trek be able to play? Uh, it plays everything that the stream can play right now. Um, one of the things that we do have on our roadmap for the future, it won't be there day one, but it is on the roadmap, is this processor will allow us to uh, process PDFs as well. Um, that, is, that is highly anticipated and something that we will be looking for. But uh, I believe right now we, we support text files, RTF, uh, BRF, uh, I think DocX, yeah, DocX we already support. Um, so it, it supports everything that the, the stream already supports. And, and are there any kind of speech synthesizers uh, that will have access to download for the track? 
right now we have a contract with acapella so we have multiple voices you can pick and choose from um, but our contract for tts is through acapella uh, will there be any more updates for Victor Reader's stream second generation? Absolutely. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's by far our most popular product, and uh, we, we, are, we, we have a team working on, on stream. Uh, every I day. think uh, maybe the last two questions, because we're, we're getting there in terms of time. Uh, one, uh, the, the, the second to last, uh, I guess, would be, uh, is there going to be any trading offers um, for people... Uh, with the with the with the track. So in other words, between Victor Reader Stream second generation to Victor Trek, will there be anything? There's not a trade-in offer. Our uh, what we are offering is this um, this early uh, this early adopter and this and my yelling at me here. Uh, the mm -hmm. the pre-order opportunity is there. So it's a hundred dollars okay. off for uh, for yeah. anyone who wants to pre-order. Um, and then. Um, the last, I guess, question, which I think is a good one, even for the ones that we didn't get to, maybe there's maybe a couple that we didn't get to. Uh, where do we send suggestions? Way to contact you with suggestions. A wonderful, wonderful point. Uh, so our support team is always going through the emails and I, they route all of the feature requests directly to myself or our other product managers. And so I do encourage anybody who has support or, uh, or, or recommendations, any of those kind of inquiries, please send them to support at humanware.com. And, um, and we will, we definitely route those to the appropriate, uh, appropriate group. Um, you can access uh, online. There is a frequently asked questions document for the Victor Reader Trek. You can go to humanware.com slash support and you'll see Victor Reader Trek is now on our website. Um, we're going to be slowly populating that. Remember, this product is still about two months away from launch. So we're going to be populating with more information, more videos, more audio demonstrations. Um, I, I I know that there's a lot of um, anticipation for this product and uh, we, we want to be able to kind of uh, to provide as much as we can before the product is out there. So um, at this stage, uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for, for spending your, your evening. Uh, I did see some, some registrations from folks in Australia. So your, uh, your, your day, um, you guys are in the future. That's awesome. Uh, we uh, we want to thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. Um, thank you for making this event the largest in humanware's history. Um, I think that it's it really shows the value of a product like this and and the really the need for GPS orientation and orientation in in, in general. So. Um, and thanks to Arlinda for staying up late. Uh, really appreciate your help here. And uh, we, we look forward to launching this product in a couple months and for, to bring, uh, bring the feedback that you give us into future software updates. Um, the Trek is a result of the feedback that you have given us. And I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for that because without your feedback, we wouldn't we wouldn't have the trek. So at this stage, um, if there are any other questions that weren't answered, feel free to send them to support at humanware.com. We will do our best to answer. As I said, the product is two months away, so I don't even have all the answers for you. But uh, but thank you again for, for joining us on this Victor Reader Trek web event, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks again.